one of the more challenging activities of daily life for someone with a tracheostomy tube or a ventilator is bathing. Extra precautions should be used to prevent water from entering the tracheostomy tube or splashing on the ventilator. Although extra care is needed, it can still be an enjoyable experience. Join me this week as I discuss how to bathe with a tracheostomy tube or ventilator. If you use a tracheostomy tube and do not use a ventilator to breathe, it is essential to protect the end of the tracheostomy tube from water. You can do one of two things to prevent water from entering the tracheostomy tube. You can place a heat and moisture exchanger on the end of the tracheostomy tube. A heat and moisture exchanger will absorb any water which may enter the tracheostomy tube. However, if too much water enters the tracheostomy tube, the heat and moisture exchanger will become saturated. Water will overwhelm the device and will allow water to leak down into your airway. Another option to prevent water from entering the airway is to use a shower shield. This will guard against water getting into the tracheostomy tube. If you use a ventilator to breathe, you will need to keep your machine dry. Do not place the ventilator inside the shower. Instead, place the ventilator outside the shower. Place a towel over the ventilator to protect it from getting sprayed with water. However, do not block the ventilator's air intake channel. If the ventilator can run on battery, please disconnect the power cord and run the machine on battery. If the ventilator must be plugged in, remember to protect the electrical cord from getting wet. If you use a heated humidifier, it is best to disconnect from the heated humidifier and switch to using a dry circuit. This will protect the heated humidifier from getting wet and possibly short circuiting. If you use a tracheostomy tube, a heat and moisture exchanger can be placed at the end of the tracheostomy tube and be connected to the ventilator tubing. The heat and moisture exchanger is usually enough protection to guard against water entering the lungs. However, if you desire, a shower shield may also be used. When showering, it is best to shower with your back towards the water. Please do not shower with your face in the water. It is best to avoid pointing the shower head at the level of the tracheostomy tube or ventilator. It may also be helpful to shower with a handheld shower wand. This allows water from the shower head to be more finely controlled. It may be more convenient to take a bath. If you take a bath, please remember to keep the water in the tub below the level of the tracheostomy tube or ventilator. For young children, use very shallow water. Allow the child time to play. However, never leave the child alone in the tub. Once showering or bathing is complete, be careful to not place a towel over the tracheostomy tube when drying off. Also, be mindful to not use powders, aerosol sprays, or perfumes. Particles and fumes can enter the lungs and may cause breathing difficulties. When showering or bathing with the tracheostomy tube, never take off the tracheostomy tube tie. If you would like to change the tracheostomy tube tie, please do so after bathing and drying off. Do not try to shower or take a bath without the tracheostomy tube fastened securely around the neck. If showering or bathing is not a safe activity, Consider doing a sponge bath. They are quick, easy, and reduce the possibility of getting water in the tracheostomy or ventilator tubing. Thank you so much for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe down below. I hope you have a great day and a wonderful week. Bye-bye.